People try to figure out how I afford this Mille Miglia Mercedes-Benz convertible. This is what I do. Hello, sir. Welcome to your Uber service. <laughs> <laughs> What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you. From the Batmobile. From the Batmobile. <laughs> here are my dog, my man, Rudy Ortiz. What's we going had, on, peeps? We had, to, we had to use a different um, lighting on this uh, a video filter because we had to bring up you know, Rudy's yeah, uh, my, brightness. My makeup doesn't show up too well here, though. We're good. <laughs> That's it, man. So, you know what? The rain just stopped. What do you think, brother? You want to bring it down? Should we bring it down? Let's bring it down. Let's bring man. it down, man. So, I'll let you do the honor since I'm the Uber driver today. Right? So, you just, you just, you just take that silver bar and lift it up. Transformers! And then hold it up. Oh, I got it. I got it up. I got it. Um, close the trunk. Oh, let's close the trunk, baby. Better close the trunk. There's a, there's a trunk partition where it goes down into. What's going on, Evelyn Yeva? Go for it, bro. Take my top off, baby. There, there you go. There we go. All right. Get my seatbelt on because, right, either click it or tick it. Don't you like when it just snugs up on you? Yeah. You put it in and it snugs up tight. Nice so. and tight. Yep, absolutely. What's going on, Edgar Diaz? What's going on, Nanju? Evelyn Yeva, great to have you guys join us. Of course, this is my man, uh, Rudy Ortiz. I, I just saw Juan, I'm about to call you Juan. <laughs> Juan Maldonado, what's, what's up, going Juan? on? So, uh, uh, what's up, everybody? Great to have you live here on Facebook. And for those of you who are watching this replay later on or finding us our channel on YouTube, Please make sure you subscribe to our channel. We have some amazing, amazing, amazing announcements coming up for aspiring entrepreneurs, especially oh, yeah. already in the financial insurance industry. So make sure you subscribe to our channel, like our page, share this content. We'd appreciate you for that. See, the sun's coming up. Yeah, right, right on, on time. Perfect. Right on time. What's up, Lopez? Got a field training done? Yeah, my man. Everybody's, by the way, everybody's leaving the office. We got our guys coming to coming the office. Coming into the office, so, yeah. So Entrepreneurs, that's, man. That's it. And it. so, uh, Dan, well, hi, Matt. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Uh, uh, how, how are you doing? And by the way, where you guys, uh, where you guys watching from, man? Let us know what city you stay. What you guys come from? Tina, what's going on? Edgar Diaz, dude. I look forward to seeing you next couple weeks in Vegas, baby. Yeah, man. Caesar's Palace. By the way, we have a phenomenal. Are you excited about it, bro? Dude, it's uh, it's it's gonna be epic. I mean, you know, you kind of hear that word thrown around, but this one's really, literally, like epic, like Star Wars epic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not Blue Man epic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because amazingly epic. Uh, how many times have you seen Blue Man already, bro? I mean, oh man, I don't know. Right now, who has it? It's right here down, down the street, you know. So. In multiple markets, who, has, who hasn't seen Blue Man already? But anyway, um, we, we got some phenomenal entertainment we're going to see in Vegas. We're going to see um, uh, Maz Jobrani. Maz Jobrani, that guy's hilarious. He's got an amazing special on Netflix. You guys should check it out. It's uh, it's called uh, I'm Not a Terrorist, but I've played one on TV. You're right. <laughs> funny, funny, uh, funny, funny guy. Guy's hilarious. And we have a mentalist. Uh, Frederick De Silva. This guy's like one of the top in the game in the world. Yeah. Man. So that's I, gonna be cool. I have a mentalist. I I, I got. I, you got I'm, mentalist I, skills, I, I, man. I got, I got mentalist skills. You guys didn't know I had mentalist skills. Pick a number between one and ten. Pick a number between one and ten. Keep it to yourself. Okay. All right. You guys pick a number between one and ten. Okay. Rudy, pick a number between one and ten. You got it. I got tell, it. Keep it to yourself. Don't sure. tell me. Boom. Okay. In your brain. Good. Yep. Good. Add five to it. Okay. Good. I know it's kind of hard and like kind of <laughs> mad and everything. Add five to it, right? Uh huh. Um, add three to it. Okay. Got it. Yep. Subtract that number by the number you started with. Okay. Right. So the number you the, the number you started with, add five to it. Right. Then you added three to it. Okay. And then you subtract that number by the number you started with. Okay. You got it. Yep. You got eight. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have eight? <laughs> What's going on, Biggie Hebert? Join us. This guy's a mentalist, man. I'm a mentalist, bro. I'm a mentalist, man. All right. So, um, uh, oh, I got uh, I got a publicist uh, reaching out to me right now. Send me a message. He wants to put me on some major publications, and uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm going to contact uh, this publicist back. We are it's time for exciting. Well, we're we're in the midst of some exciting times. But uh, Everly, she got eight two as well, man. <laughs> Everly got eight two as well. Let me, let me get out of let me get out of the way here. But anyway, I uh, I want to reach out to you guys because I. 
Oop, you know what? We didn't close it all the way. So uh, lift up and then and, and then pull it up all the way. Hear that beep? There it is. There's a beep. Perfect. Cool. So I hope you guys learned something new about a Mercedes convertible. You pull the lever all until the it way. beeps, right? <laughs> so um, since I'm today's uh, Uber driver for Rudy Ortiz. Yes. And uh, Rudy Ortiz, where would you like to go today? Um, let's go to Cigar Lounge, man. Let's go to uh, Conference Room. Six. Conference room six it is. Let's go, bro. Matter of fact, I don't even GPS for that. <laughs> know exactly where to go. We're going to conference room six. That is the AKA Cigar Lounge. Um, it's kind of like my make my uh, uh, making up for my wife because she's taking out all the women that she. There's a, a mentoring dinner that my wife is hosting tonight, so uh, I get to have my guy, nice. Rudy, Rudy Ortiz. But I want to I want to I want to uh, share with you a thought I had about Uber. In terms of making his biggest biggest mistake, not that you guys are all entertained, but uh, Uber made a huge mistake, and um, you know, for 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 many many people around the world, especially here in Chicago. I mean, have you taken Uber? Yeah, a few times. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, especially for myself, if I if I, I'm in the suburbs of Oak Brook, if I know I got a meeting in the city, like downtown Chicago, I won't drive downtown. Either I, I catch the train or I just take Uber because I don't I don't want to deal with traffic. I just want to sit. Uh, answer my emails, messages, and contacting people. And so, uh, Ashley says she wants to go in your car. <laughs> no problem, Ashley. No problem. We're gonna we're, let's, let's set that up and square that away. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, Ash. We're gonna get you here, Little Miss Models of America. And for those of you guys who don't know, um, that's Rosie Ortiz making a comment. That's Rudy's wife, and Ashley. That's my baby. This is daughter. So, uh, Adam Cry, what's going on, Adam? You. Yeah. Good to see you, my man. So um, Uber's made some mistakes, and 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 as I'm looking at big business, you know, success leaves clues, and if if you if you want to be smart or wise, well, by the way, would you rather be, bro? Would, would you rather be smart or wise? I'd I'd rather be wise. Yeah, I think I need to change my name to the money wise guy. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, it's related to the mafia. I'm not sure if that kind of I don't want to be known as a wise guy, but you might have the whole different market after you after that, buddy. <laughs> A whole different demographic. Why is everybody in Long Island reaching out to me? Hats out to got an offer for you. You can't refuse, man. <laughs> and we were we were just in a, we were just in Long Island uh, back in December. We were at Ohika Castle, True. right, yeah. for our, our million dollar mastermind retreat. That was awesome. Great spot out there, man. Long Island, beautiful place. We we're at Ohika Castle, where the Great Gatsby was inspired by uh, Scott uh, to Scott Fitzgerald, the author of The Great Gatsby. But uh, Uber's made some mistakes. To get back on topic, Uber's made some mistakes. And if I want to be wise, yes, smart, but wise is better because smart is learning from your mistakes. But I think wisdom is learning from the mistakes of others. Absolutely. And would you agree? I completely agree. And so if you want to know how to get ahead in your business and get a lot of success faster in your career, then later, A, learn from your mistakes, and then B, learn from the mistakes of others. Because you'll save a lot of time you save a lot of money. See, we can always blow money and lose money, but one thing we can't always recoup is time. And so, many of you guys have been seeing Uber in the news. Uh, what do you think? Should I get out? Because it's kind of loud. Huh? Yeah. But let me take, we'll take, yeah, we'll take a local. We'll take, we'll take, take the scenic route. We'll, uh, we'll, take, we'll take the more scenic route. So What's going local. on, Marquez? Good to have you on the feed, brother. Marquez, what's going on, brother? So, consider this, guys. Uber, uh, they fired their, their, well, I don't call it firing, but he stepped down, resigned. It's a good way for saying fired. Yeah. But uh, his board, uh, the Uber board, made a decision to have the CEO of uh, Uber, uh, Travis Kalanick, step down. This, this, by the way, this, this isn't recent news. This is, this is old news, but I'm, I'm looking through all the details. I'm looking at why. Why do certain things happen in business? Because this is a billion dollar company. It's a unicorn of a company. It's one of the fastest growing companies in the history of the world. Yeah. It's uh, worth $38 billion, worth $38 billion. Incredible. Right? Incredible. So there's a lot of great things you can learn from a company like that. And there's, you know, we're always observing because, you know, you know, I come from the, uh, an average and ordinary neighborhood. I don't have a, I don't have a pedigree. Um, I don't have the right last name. I didn't come from an inheritance. Uh, you know, for the most part, I don't know how to get involved in tech. I mean, create an app, 
I mean, if I'm going to get in front of uh, uh, fund managers and, and hedge fund managers and private equity firms to raise my own capital to pitch investors to build my own tech company, I'm not, I wouldn't know where to begin. Yeah. Matter of fact, I started my business with a 500 credit score and $500. <laughs> five by five, baby. Five by five plan. <laughs> After spending five years in high school. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't spend five years in high school. But um, I, I think I was 17 when I graduated high school. Went into the military. Was in the Marine Corps. Um, and I'm looking at, I'm always learning from mistakes. And one of the mistakes that I see Uber make is that, A, you got to take care of your people, man. That's it. Right? You got to take care of people. We both run businesses. Right? We both run businesses. Uh, Rudy's one, not, he's not only one of my people, but he's also my business partner. He runs, uh, uh, you just recently relocated, right, Rude Dog? Yeah, we just uh, opened up a new office in Des Plaines. So we're on uh, River Road and Tui in Des Plaines. Yep, he's one of our executives. One of my business partners runs his own operation. Doesn't work for me, works with me um, in Des Plaines. And you've also helped a couple of young ladies there establish their businesses too. True. Yeah, we have uh, Anna Murphy, who just uh, hit partner there, and also Iris Torres. Who's, who's Anna Murphy, bro? Anna Murphy's my little sister. Yeah. So it's good to be in business with her. She's, right. a, she's a stud at. That's right. Iris Torres, too, as well. Definitely. I'm a stud at. And so, you know, you got to be in the business of taking, your, taking care of your people. Now, you can't do anything about lazy people. True. People that always make excuses, whine, and, and, and do this stuff, right? Because... Listen, if you want success, you got to do the work. Hustle so separately, baby. Yeah. Nothing you can do about that, man. There's Correct. no system. There's no plan. There's no There's no amount of money. There's nothing that replaces the hustle. Success without trusting process is fruitless. That's it. Like if all you're looking for is a big bang without process, you, you get success, but it's not going to be lasting. Right. And that's why we see guys bounce, jump, they're chasing the next best thing, chasing a dollar. Uh, but if and, and look at Uber, right? Instead of instead of freaking out, they focus on their one thing to do really well. And once they did did one thing really well, they expanded uh, markets, they expanded across the world. But the problem, they, let me get back to the mistake, is they didn't take care of the people. Um, even its own dr uh, driver. Uh, there's a video out there where uh, the CEO is being chauffeured and driven by his one of his own drivers. I think the guy Ubered, and uh, the CEO, Travis Kalik, is, I mean, is legitimately playing his own stuff. He's a, he's a client of his own business. True. Right? Which it's not legit. That's legit. Awesome. So he held, he held an Uber. His own black, his, uh, 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 an Uber black car pick, uh, picks him up. He's in there, uh, drops off these young ladies, um, or whoever whoever's company was. Uh, drop drops him off, and then he gets in a it's, he gets in an argument with his own driver. His his own driver is calling him out. Mm -hmm. He's like, brother, I lost a lot of money because of you. The guy's like, what are you talking about? I don't you didn't lose any money because of me. He said, listen, you gave us all an opportunity, which is Uber, and we left the cabs, we purchased cars through your Uber purchase program, and I think he lost like like half a million bucks, filed bankruptcy, and he's calling him out on it. He says, listen, I didn't make you do anything. He says, well, you created an opportunity for me, but then you changed the game. Yep. Changed the rules you, and changed the comp plan. You changed your price. So so now you're work, making me work this because you were paying us here, and now boom, you, you slam it down. And a guy's arguing back and forth, and he's not listening to his people. And so that's the difference between corporate governance, ego, and an actual wartime CEO leading the way. Because a wartime CEO will listen to its people. They'll listen to the people that's out there in the field of combat. They'll listen to the people that's out there in the trenches, in the grind, man. And now you run your own office, right? And and we all have our own set of distractions and attacks that come from all directions. True. Right? But we don't we don't cower to it, but more, more so we, we listen to it. That's it. But then I said, you, you can't say anything about drivers that are lazy, drivers that don't want to put into work, but yet compensation was up here now they dropped it. I mean, how would you like to be part of a business, part of an organization where they're, they're paying you X, next thing they change the comp on you? I mean, if, if you're running a company, right? We, we run our own company, we're a company. I mean, if you're gonna uh, do something compensation, what would you rather do, lower your compensation on you guys or 
or increase the competition for you guys? No, absolutely. You want to increase it because that provides motivation. It, it buys you loyalty. Um, you know, it, it incentivizes the field force, which is the, the backbone of your business. How many guys out there watching this live stream right now, how many guys have taken Uber? Let me ask you this question. How many guys have taken Uber and how many guys have actually taken Lyft? Uber or Lyft? So, right? so in the comments, write Uber or Lyft. I want to know who's taken Uber and is taken Lyft. The second question I want you to answer is which one do you prefer? Uber or Lyft? Uber or Lyft? Which one do you prefer? Dan um, Marco says Uber. Miriam Berry says both. Right now, let, now let's look at uh, let's look at if you know somebody that's a driver. If they're a driver, what do they prefer? Do they prefer being an Uber driver or a Lyft driver? You know, sometimes I see them do both. True, I've seen quite a few do that. However, this is a mistake that happened. As soon as that all happened, the CEO gets let down. They're having conflicts with their drivers, right? Uh, they're having issues. You know what happens to Uber? All the Uber drivers? They, they leave. They bailed, man. Peace out. And where do they go to? They go to Lyft. They go to Lyft. To the tune of about $8 billion. And so what's happening is that their greatest competitor just took all their people simply because of one thing. They didn't take care of the people, man. Wow. They didn't take care of the people. That means similar technology, right? Similar technology, similar app. Uh, you can argue between one or two, what, which one is more um, progressive and uh, which one you, what, what app you have. But I have both apps. Sure. I have Uber and Lyft. Me too. Uh, but, you know, the drivers are saying, you know what? I'd rather go to Lyft because they take care of us. And so if you're building a company, a bit of advice is if you don't take care of your people, somebody else will. That's exactly right. Miriam Berry, she says, I agree with Juan. Lyft takes better care of their people. And I think that's the point where Uber kind of, you know, I, I think part of the problem with them is they got a little big headed, you know, they, they, they're against, they got, they got arrogant knowing that they were dominating the game and uh, they took that for granted thinking that that was always going to be the case. And uh, they threw their people under the bus and now it cost them $8 billion of market share, which is a huge piece. That's a huge piece of market share. So let's translate that to our business, Rudy. I mean, we got a competitor out there. Right? We got so quite a few. We got quite a few competitors out there. Some worth mentioning, some others that don't even matter. Yeah. And so for the purpose of this video, let's not even mention because you know where we're going, pound for pound, we've had nine consecutive quarters beating our last quarter. Not too many companies can say that. Not too many companies. In in across industries, let alone in the industry that we're in. I mean, that's just not a normal thing for yep. for businesses. Nine consecutive growing quarters. Yep. And this year, you're, you're, I mean, you're moments away from getting your stock option paperwork as an Absolutely. equity owner of our company. Yep. Uh, I think Tommy Clark got his, uh, he, he qualified just, for he stock. just locked up his. his Congrats, uh, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy Proud Clark out there. So, um, translate that, we've got competitors out there. Uh, but you know what the competitors aren't, you know, you know, one of our main competitors, you know what they're not, we see them not doing? Is being open and honest and taking care of their people. How do we know that? Because their people reach out to us. Yep. Every day, all day. Their people reach out to us and their people are coming over to us much like an Uber driver leaving to Lyft. And and you know what, man? I mean, you know, it's one thing when you got people that are coming over and taking a look at it and, and these are, you know, regular people, but when you've got like A players, these are people that are making seven figures. They've Season. been in the they've yeah. been in the industry 10, 15 years. You know, they're seasoned, they're respected, they they, they got their stuff, like, you know. Yeah, they know Those, what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Those are the guys that are reaching out and yep. trying to look at what's on the other side of the fence over here. Yep. And so, you know, so that, that's my first uh, That's my first thought about that. And the second thing with Lyft, for the drivers, by the way, there's an Uber car right in front of us. <laughs> it's got the sticker in <laughs> it. got the sticker in front of us. But uh, the, the thing with Lyft, you know what they allow for the drivers to earn based on a driver's not only just a five-star rating, but you know, if I'm driving Lyft and a guy gives me a good good service, whatever case, you know what I can leave the guy? You can leave him a tip. I can leave him a tip. That's awesome. So man. there's upside. That's awesome. And you know what Uber's not allowing the guys to do? Give them tips. Wow, that sounds very corporate-y. Very corporate. Very, 
very uh, st stingy. Yeah. Right. Um, you know the way I look at it. If you if you're confident about your business anyway, uh, you're gonna end up creating a lot of volume. When you create a lot of volume in business, there's a lot of bread going around, man. There's two different types of mentalities you can you can build a business with. You can build a business with with a, with an abundance mentality, or you can build a business with a scarcity mentality. Yep. And when you're building a scarcity mentality, you're always looking for the biggest commission, the next shiny thing, the next deal of the day, the next deal of the quarter, the next deal of the year, next thing you know, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, you're finding yourself another opportunity because you operate that way, you operate from scarcity. But if you are around an organization or or leaders or executives or or a board that's causing you always to raise your standards, you know, it lifts con constantly raising standards, you're improving their standards. And that's why Uber drivers, and if Uber does, is not careful, they might lose their place in the industry. They're losing it. Right? Think, think about this, bro. I mean, Zan brought up a good point. Uh, Zan Rozelle, I'm talking Zan Rozelle, right? He, he represents a 169-year-old insurance company. Yep. You know, back in the day, when you and I were, were growing up, uh, by the way, Rudy and I were both Generation X. Yeah, Generation X, baby. Yeah. Got a head house. Music. Yeah. All night long. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sexiest generation in the history of humankind. Don't know why, but if you're Generation X, born between 19, uh, was it 1967 and... And uh, 1979, 80, I think it's 85 or something like that. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. that's your generation, man. But you're sexy. <laughs> so, um, uh, what's my point? I got lost in the house music. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I totally lost my point. You, you were mentioning about um, <laughs> Uber and how they uh, they were loosening their positioning. Um, <laughs> that house music. Yeah, really that, took, that house music took, took us up. back. Took us back. Oh, <laughs> tell my coffee. Think about, I'm, I'm thinking about, my point was coffee. When we were growing up, there's no Starbucks. True. Right? However, how many guys watching this right now know the rest of this jingle? Right? I'm, I'm a surprise. Rudy doesn't know what I'm talking about. Here we go. You know when you were born, when you know the finishing sentence phrase of this jingle. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm talking about? You, you know you just dated yourself, right? <laughs> right? How many of you guys know that that uh, Folgers uh, commercial, man? Um, uh, right? So you guys know that. Maxwell House. Better question that. Because they failed to innovate. They failed to take care of the people. Dan Morgan knows it. He knows Folgers. Right? Because they failed to take care of the people. They failed to innovate. They failed to, to take care of their executives. They fail to be progressive in the thought process and listening to the younger generation of what's going out there and seeing how things are being marketed and how products and services are being distributed. You know what happened to Folgers and Maxwell House market share? Plummeted. So who's the dominant player in the coffee industry right now? Starbucks. Starbucks, baby. And Dunkin' Donuts. And Dunkin' and I gotta give props to Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts, listen, because when we were growing up, what was Dunkin' Donuts? They were a donut company. They're a donut company. Yep. And today? They're a coffee company. They're a coffee company. America yeah. runs on Dunkin'. Notice they're not playing the Dunkin' Donuts side. They're, they're taking what their brand was and just kind of re reshifted their brand Correct. Into, into coffee. So they uh, adapted to the marketplace. They adapted to what everybody was saying, and they adapted to uh, the competition, too. Yep. yep. And I think a lot of frustration where people had into when they're with an organization and they're with a the company is they fail that the people that are making policies and the people that are setting the rules especially when it comes to compensation and taking care of your people like make no mistake at the end of the day we're here to make money yeah i mean i when i when i was in the financial industry even though i had a 120 percent commission contract when i was a licensed agent i was writing business 120 percent contract 125 percent contract but you know they weren't doing this this uh financial marketing organization really you know they, they weren't doing with me they weren't taking care of me. They they weren't showing they weren't showing me that they cared about me. Uh, the president of this financial marketing organization they weren't returning my phone calls. Uh, I wanted to innovate. I wanted to grow. They weren't taking my phone calls. They weren't responding to me as fast. And I was the number one guy. And I left this organization. And I went to another organization. Um, I was working with uh, a gentleman in San Diego called uh, uh, Bill Zimmerman. His name was Bill Zimmerman. 
I work with Life Probe. Met a mentor there named uh, uh, Scott Bergman, uh, Douglas Andrew, author of uh, uh, Misfortune 101, Last Chance Millionaire, Millionaire by 30, and Equity for Life. Uh, Scott Bergman was uh, working with Equity for Life. They took care of me. Uh, even though I was getting paid higher at uh, somewhere else, they took care of me. Yep. And then when I got my head out of my ass, I learned how, uh, learned how to build and scale a business. Uh, this mentor named uh, Patrick Ben David took care of me. He said, listen, if you can take your skills and co-brand and work together with us, I'll let you co-brand and build a business with us. And are you kidding me? Because I was with this other company. We were with this other company that said we can be an agency builder and come to find out it was corporate governance. And instead of increasing compensation, they are taken away. You need to get more licenses to get, well, listen, the marketplace ain't dictating what we need to get more licenses. We need to create better marketing. Correct. Right? And this, this now our competitor, pipeline, man. yeah, our, our one of our greatest competitors, we're not even worried about it anymore. You know why? Because they've created such stringent policies. They've taken themselves out of the game, man. And, they're, and they've handcuffed their field force, which is what feeds them. How do you do that? How, how long can you last? Not long, man. And they're calling us. They're reaching out to us. They're watching these live stream videos. You know, one guy said, Matt, listen, I don't care what anybody's ever said about you. Because three things happen. Number one, they create they create a lot of they create a lot of um, defamation. So people don't reach out to us. Uh, number two, they create a lot of myths and rumors and gossip. True. Uh, which we easily debunk. Corporate espionage, baby. Right? And, and then number three, when people once people get to really know about us, they say, you know what? I watch all your stuff. There's ev there's evidence. There's social proof about what you guys are doing. You guys aren't bad as what we thought. You we are led to believe. They're, ac they're actually some people tend to like us. <laughs> Just a couple. Just a couple. Yeah. <laughs> but because of this company not taking care of their people, their their people are calling us, and we're doing nothing but just being present, uh, uh, grinding out, and making the best of our opportunity. You know, there's a, there's a meme out there that says, uh, um, grind until your competitors ask if you're taking the applications. It's literally happening right now. That's very uh, fitting right now. And people are asking us, Matt, we realize that you guys are going to be in Vegas August 16th or the 19th. Uh, uh, we have a, our gala night. We've got Wayne Gretzky coming out. We've got Coach John Calipari from Kentucky coming out. I can't Woo! wait to hear from him, man. Man, that's going to be awesome. we got Grant Cardone coming out. Mr. 10X himself, be, be obsessed or be average, coming out. We got, uh, Maj we mentioned earlier, Maja Brown and Frederick, Frederick De Silva. We got our own CEO, founder, Patrick B. David, host of Valuetainment, the number one channel on YouTube for entrepreneurs. He's got more subscribers than YouTube Magazine, more subscribers than even Grant Cardone. And we're not talking about fluff, that's facts. And got all these things going on, and they're like, listen, our, our convention ends Friday night. Can we come to your convention that Friday evening? We're getting we're getting those weird phone calls. Why? Because we realize that even though I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur supposedly over there, I can't change the policies of corporate governments above me because of additional licensing. And these guys can't even do social media as much. Those guys they can't even do live video like this. I remember seeing uh, some some of their people, uh, and these were like big players. This and this was maybe not too long ago, but. Basically, they were just signing off. They're like, hey, man, this is going to be my last post on Facebook. I'm out because he's shackled up, man. Yeah, their, their higher-ups are causing him to say, you know what? Get off Facebook. Get off social media. Listen, hello, marketing is what brings in, what builds a business. Marketing is the lifeblood of a business. You shut down marketing. You don't have nothing. You got no blood in your veins. You're a dead business. And you're just going to let your competition... Take your best people because you're not taking care of them, because you're failing to adapt. One of the biggest things I learned from the Marine Corps is to improvise, adapt, and overcome. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing business. Uh, that's why our uh, that's why our company was offered a nine-figure deal last year to purchase and, and to uh, attempt to acquire us. We said no. Come back to us when you got a B, a B on that check. That's right. Come back to us when you got a B, billion dollar on that check. And that's what we're doing, guys. We're building the next billion dollar opportunity we're not here to create millionaires man uh millionaires or we're not interested in creating millionaires we're looking for people who think big exactly like you rudy and for those, for those some of you guys out there watching right now that are thinking big and un, and spreading the hope of capitalism that are spreading the message of free enterprise the reason why our competitor can't improvise adapt and overcome because they, they stripped out 
the elements of capitalism, free enterprise internally within inside the corporate structures. That's not what we're doing, man. And what we're doing right now, we're a beacon of hope for a lot of people. And, and listen, what changed my life coming out the Marine Corps is not when Carlton Enloe, the guy that recruited me into financial services, that recruited me into the industry, that recruited me into the business world out of the military. I mean, he set up a $150 a month variable universal life insurance policy for me. He helped me budget and get out of debt, bro. Uh, but that didn't change my life. You know what changed my life? Changed my life because he taught me how to create income. Mm. How to create income. How to create control. How to work hard and get rewarded for it. I mean, our, our competitors are working really, really hard. But you know what they're not doing? They're not getting rewarded they're for not it. Not getting rewarded man. for it. Not to the level that they're working. And, and Uber just, just uh, uh, released a report three weeks ago, or not Uber, but uh, a, a study said that people working at Uber are working long hours. Sadly, they're not getting paid for it. That's why a lot of these guys are moving from Uber, Uber moving to Lyft. That's why people go from team to team. That's why certain guys, like in the professional sports, like right now training camp is going on. I want to know if I'm a professional athlete, I'm getting taken care of by a franchise. And it isn't always... It isn't always the biggest amount of money. It has to do with, with value. And I think right now in the marketplace, arguably, Rudy, uh, us building PHP agency, what do you think, man? Are we creating a lot of value? Well, I think that the, the numbers speak for themselves. And, and you know, it, it's, it's like Patrick always says, let your success um, shut up the critics. Proof is in the pudding. You know, let your success be what makes the noise. And um, nobody can deny the numbers, man. You know, people lie. Uh, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. They tell you a story. Nine consecutive quarters winning. That tells you a story, right? Uh, biggest comp plan in the industry. That tells you a story. For us, the, our, our comp plan. Right. For, 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 for an agency building model, right? For an agency building model. Uh, equity ownership opportunity. That tells you a story. And uh, fastest growing company in our in our mix. Hey guys, I want you to share this video. Do me a favor, share this video. And uh, when this video is done, please share this video. When this video uh, is over and we look at it, we're gonna grab a cigar. And Rudy got we got to talk some business. But uh, I'm gonna have Rudy go through all my shares, and randomly we're gonna pick a, win a winner on this video. And what I like to do, uh, we're come out with a new T-shirt. Um, uh, it's going to be on the value team and story pretty soon. It's, gonna be, it's a black shirt and green. It's going to say, I am an entrepreneur. It's nice. And uh, we want to award uh, that shirt. So so we're going to award for the, those that share this video. That if you've learned something for this, that you've learned, man, I need to take care of my people. I need to take care of myself. You now, sometimes we run into entrepreneurs and say, man, I need, I need to take care of my people. I need to, well, listen, you got to take care of yourself first. Because if you don't take care of yourself to build enough business, you're, gonna have, you're not going to have a business to take care of anybody. Right. So you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta take care of your deal, man. Take care of business, create cash flow. So therefore you have money to pay people. And so um, uh, with, that, with that being said, guys, you know I'm, I'm excited about what we've got, we got, got going on in business, our compensation plan, the value we're providing industry. And then on Friday night, Friday night, August 18th, if you're in Las Vegas, August 18th, if you are in Las Vegas, right? You just happened to be in Las Vegas. Said, Matt, I'm tired of gambling with my life. I'm tired where my life is going. I'm tired. I'm tired where 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 this association or company I'm a part of, whatever it is, whatever you got going on. If you happen to be in Vegas, August 18th, and you reach out to me, private message me, money smart guy, private message me, and uh, we'll work on a way. We'll work on a way to find help you find a way into our. We might have to create an overflow room because we're we're completely yeah, sold we're out. Our event is sold out. We're gonna have to create an overflow room, patch in via satellite TV with inside the Caesars Palace. But come down to the Caesars Palace, Friday night, August 18th. Private message us, we'll find a way to make some room. Listen, if there's a will, there's a way. If you create the will, we'll find a way. Uh, why? Because we want to take care of people who are aspiring entrepreneurs in the financial world, in the insurance industry. It's, it's, it, dude, the insurance industry has changed my life, bro. It's changed my life. And you've, you've been in multiple uh, businesses too as well. Absolutely, man. And nothing has uh, has rewarded us and given us the lifestyle and allowed us not only that, but to have a lasting impact yeah. in in our community and in the marketplace like, like we're doing here today. That's it. Nothing.
So as, as we uh, sign off, I'm going to give you guys some love. So Adam Cry, he shared it. Mama Miriam Berry shared it. Uh, Bree Cruz, what's going on, Bree? MSM for life. What's going on, <laughs> Bree Cruz? Perla Rodriguez uh, joined us. Uh, uh, Veronica, what's going on, Veronica? Giving you a quick shout out real quick. Marquise Garrett. Uh, Sierra Sherrod, what's going on? Dan Morgan, he knows Folgers. Uh, appreciate you guys for uh, these comments. Jimmy Diaz, Dorothy Janganese. Uh, by the way, Dorothy, uh, sh big shout out to Dorothy Janganese. She's Filipina and she's, she was the administrator at DePaul University in the early 2000s when I took my GI Bill and then took the Certified Financial Planning course. Wow. She just joined us uh, She just joined us now here. Uh, by the way, Dorothy, I just want to let you know, in my Certified Financial Planning uh, classes, I asked all my classes, right? every time I took tax planning, income, um, investment planning, uh, estate planning, all the different courses of a certified financial planning course, every class in module I went through, which was 13 weeks each, I always asked the class, who is going to be an entrepreneur at DePaul University? Who is going to be an entrepreneur in the certified financial planning class? I was the only one ever to raise my hand. Wow. Everybody else was gonna work for Tia Kreff, Vanguard, Fidelity, I was the only one. And I believe out of that class, because we still keep, keep in contact, I'm the only one that's still in the industry. Wow, interesting. Not because I got a good job, because entrepreneurship changed my life. So Dorothy, thank you for joining us. And it's so good to know, it's so good to know that uh, I came across your path in the early 2000s. Uh, Wendy Powers, you have to take care of your people, right? And, and an example of taking care of my people is my wife right now. My wife. Um, she created a uh, she created a contest for entrepreneurs out there to qualify for a dinner with my wife, and how to be a better entrepreneur, uh, a woman entrepreneur. She's leading this initiative called PHP Ladies, and she wants to connect with the wives, the women. And if you're that's a guy, awesome. you qualified, send your wife to this dinner. That's it. Wow, that's awesome. All right, because w uh, women are a fa uh, are more women today are graduating college, are in politics, are in corp in, uh, in in corporate America, are in in entrepreneurship. And my wife is hosting a dinner to reach out to women to create a community of women entrepreneurs out there. So just like here, we're, we're looking to create an entrepreneurs of, uh, a community of entrepreneurs that want to take care of its people. So Rudy, I want to take care of you, man. And grab, grab a stogie on me. I appreciate it, brother. And by the way, there's more ways to take care of people outside of just buying them dinner, uh, buy, getting them a cigar. I do that because I'm in business with these guys and we'll let this pass. There's more ways to take care of people outside of just money, everybody. It's value, there's leadership, it's being there when a text message is, is sent out. It's uh, being there to assist. I mean, you and I, have, we've had many conversations about raising standards. Absolutely. And sometimes Rudy has not liked me. A few times. But uh, guess what, your toes are in the sand. We're in Cancun. We were in uh, Ohika Castle uh, yeah. last December. We were in Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta. Costa Rica. Costa we travel the world together, brother. Right? And that's another thing. Don't ever lose a relationship that cause that, that that person causes you to raise your standards. That's another that's another way of taking care of people. And the people who have low standards, they end up quitting, jumping to other things. You ever you ever see a resume of Rudy where people go for this company, 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 right? That's that because they have evidence of that habit. As much as winning is a habit, so is quitting and not sticking to anything. So that's my recommendation to you guys, man. Take care of people. Double down. Right in the, in the power of association. So I can go on and on. I just want to share with you that idea, that thought process with you guys. So with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Uh, uh, look at Lorenzo Salas. I don't roll that way, my buddy. <laughs> What's up, Zoe? Lorenzo's on there. And uh, Sierra Sherrod. Uh, that's right, Sierra Sherrod. Being taken under Sheena's wing is priceless. Love her. Well, she loves you back, Sierra. That's right. Right? Angel Flores. Angel Flores will be with my wife tonight. Nice. Uh, Daniel Morgan, thank you for sharing this. Jesus Martinez, thank you for sharing this. Guillermo Vasquez, thank you for sharing this. and appreciate you. All right? So go out there, change people's lives. And if you're building a company, find more ways to bring value and take care of your people. That's it. Otherwise, somebody else will. True. Until we meet again. Continue to live smart. Continue to live smart. And be, be mighty, mighty smart, smart today. today. God bless you guys. Peace. Until next video.